Hi, my name's Alice and I'm a geophysicist at Northern Archaeological Associates and I'm going to be showing you how we use one of these to make one of these to produce one of these. Uh, this is the NAA How To Collector Grid of Gradiometer Survey, um, the archaeo process, the archaeo cycle of geophysics. So before I can pull a mag out and start data collecting, first of all I need to lay a grid out on the ground so I know exactly where I'm walking but also when I get back to the office where exactly I did walk. Now at NAA we use preloaded grids into um, a GPS, so here's my GPS and um, I'm currently laying out this grid. And what this means is we can basically hit the ground running so that we're you know, faster in our kind of preamble and setup on site. But it also means we can um, look at where, let's say, earthworks or if there's any crop marks, things like this, um, on a computer and make sure our grid's on a different alignment to these. Um, so, for example, with gradiometer surveys, often if you walk on the exact same alignment as potential archaeology, when you're processing the data, you run the risk of processing out the anomalies that relate to these kind of features. Um, and, um, and so by using a preloaded grid, we can avoid that. And likewise, a lot of people sometimes set grids out on the same alignment as field boundaries. And if you have any ridge and furrow or kind of agricultural activity, often this is on the same alignment as the field boundaries. So you run the risk of processing these things out. So, um, so this grid is on a north-south alignment and it's on a completely different alignment to the archeology. span So it gives us the best chance in finding out what's buried underneath this ground. Okay, so introducing the Bartonchen Grad 601. Before we can actually start collecting any data, first we need to balance our instrument. So this is a magnetic um, geophysics technique and it's uh, technically a gradiometer because it takes readings on a gradient and effectively what that means is we have lots of sensors going on. So in here I have um, a sensor to my left and a sensor to my right, but in each of the sensors we also have a sensor at the top and a sensor at the bottom. Um, so before I can start collecting data, what I need to do is I need to make sure that all my sensors are reading the same base value so that when we download the data, it looks nice and even. Now, the way to do that is you <laughs> wander, preferably in a straight line, um, until you find an area of maybe two to three metres where the readings are fairly constant. Once you've got an area like that, we grab our compass and we make markings on the ground like I've done here showing where north is, where south is, and then um, a middle point, um, which I'll stand on a yellow peg. And, um, and then we basically balance it, as I'm about to do now. Okay, so once you've adjusted your gradiometer and you feel you're ready to go, stop. Um, just need to do a quick check to just make sure that it is indeed balanced and this is a good balance spot. So if I put it on scan, I'm now going to quickly do some pirouettes just to make sure when I um, kind of rotate it around it in all directions is basically reading the same value on the same spot on both sensors. Awesome, so that's... Um, I don't know, I'd say it's just over half an Asm Tesla on either side, so that's pretty good. Um, so, right, it's all balanced, we're now ready to finally collect some data. Okay, so once you've got a grid laid out on the ground, as I have behind me, and you've, um, you've set up your Bartington, all your sensors are nice and balanced and they're ready to go, it's finally time to actually collect some data. So, um, today I'm doing a 1 metre traverse interval and a 0.25 metre um, sample interval. And what this basically means, if you imagine a grid, on the Y I'm going to be taking readings every 25 centimetres um, going up, and then on the X, I'm going to be taking readings every one metre going along. Now, the beauty of the Bartington Grad um, 601s is we have two sensors, and that basically means every line I walk, I'm taking two lots of readings. So this is a 30 metre grid behind me. I'm uh, doing a one metre traverse, so all I need to do is walk 15 lines, and I've basically collected a grid. So let's get going.
Okay, so once we finish um, collecting the data, we have a look at it, check it's okay, and if it is, we um, bring it back to the office where we start to process it. And that's when we turn a data set that looks like this. So this is my raw data. Um, and then after some processing, it turns into something that looks a little bit more like this. So you can see it's a lot more aesthetically pleasing um, and you can start to really see um, some of these anomalies and how they might uh, relate to potential buried features. Um, once we've finished processing, I export um, the images and then upload onto these computers when I start to interpret and try and understand my data. Okay, so once we finish processing our data, we export it as a BMP and then we upload it onto our um, super speedy, two-screened um, uh, desktop computers and um, start to actually put together some interpretations. So um, uh, my preference is to use AutoCAD. Um, I know a lot of people actually prefer ArcGIS. I'll let the world argue over that. Um, both have their pros and cons. Um, and once we've got the data into AutoCAD, we can start to actually look at the anomalies and turn them into features. Um, I know this is a, a scary thing for many geophysicists, but I guess we try. Um, and, um, and we start to try and, you know, understand what's going on. So here's my grid and uh, look, oh, it's surrounded by lots of other grids. And, um, and we can start to uh, kind of consider each of these anomalies, uh, what they might relate to, what type of feature, start to draw around them and understand them. And as I've said before, I also quite like to look at my data in Google Earth. Um, just because um, it gives me a way to kind of understand what's going on in the landscape, um, you know, topography, but I can also uh, plot in other things uh, such as LiDAR data, which really helps me understand my anomalies and try and get the best interpretation I can out of them. Um, once we've interpreted and we've uh, kind of uh, created um, a series of illustrations, we turn them into one of these, which is our geophysics survey report, um, and um, and allows us to kind of detail uh, survey conditions, the methodology we uh, produced, and also discuss why we might be interpreting things in certain ways. And so I guess thus is the uh, final chapter um, of the lonely gradiometer survey grid, um, and how the process works in terms of us collecting it, um, interpreting it, and then I guess disseminating it.